Friday. Hope you had an unbelievable week. I hope that you have been able to move closer to your goals, your, your vision, your dream, your aspirations. I hope that things are beginning to fall in place. And uh, what I do uh, try to do as best possible is to communicate to everyone that this is life. This is not a video game. This is not uh, some situation where you get to manipulate and control all elements, variables, and components of what happens. In other words, there are some things that's going to be out of your control. You are going to experience setbacks. You're going to experience some disappointments. You're going to experience uh, frustrations at times. That That's okay. That's par for the course. Your sole responsibility is to stay in the game. Your sole responsibility is to honor the designer by living at the level of your design. It is about applying yourself, even when it doesn't seem like there are results, because what you understand, because you've done your homework, because you understand and you've evaluated your life and your past, is that you understand that even when you can't see it, if you're working the, if you're working the, the plan, if you're working the, 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 the um, process, if you're not cheating the process, then you are producing results. It may take a while for the results to manifest themselves. Before I get any deeper, I want to remind everybody that right now we're in the middle of the One You Love event. And it's real simple. Anyone who purchases a package uh, to work with yours truly, it doesn't apply to anybody else at the Visionetics Institute, just yours truly. Um, anyone who purchases any one of the packages to work with me will receive an additional package of equal value to gift to someone else for this uh, final uh, quarter of the year, uh, moving into the giving season, so to speak. Give someone something that keeps on giving, some, something that grows, something that has uh, intrinsic value. Give them something that can change their lives. And so I'm giving. I'm giving the person who comes a chance to bless another person and walk that journey together. So the link uh, is going to be in the box. Hey, little bro, man, I'm so proud of you. Brian King, I'm so proud of you, man. I see everything you're doing, man. Big ups to you. Um, so the information is in the box. Um, if not, just email. Uh, I'm going to put the email in the, uh, you can email. There it is. It should pop up in the chat on each one of these. You can email uh, the organization um, at that and you will get someone with the support team and they will connect you. Or you can simply go to uh, www.rickwallacephd.link and go to sources and programs, go to one-on-one -on -one coaching, which also covers counseling and consulting and look at the packages and there will be a place where you can purchase. And then once you do, you will be gifted uh, the additional package. So that's out of the way. There are also other resources in the description box. Let's talk real brief. I'm not going to be long. It's Friday. Now, some of you have had an unbelievable week. Some of you have had remarkable success. There are others of you who have struggled. There are others of you who are looking at the process and you can't see immediate results and you're frustrated. First thing you need to remember is this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. This is not a microwavable moment in your life. This is a result of practicing habits of behavior and habits of thought that produce the desired result. It is a consistency and application that will produce the results. There is no quick fix. There is no magic potion. There is no, I, I, I hit it one time and I ride the wave. There are going to be some great moments where you're going to take quantum leaps in this life. You're going to have a moment where you're going to be here and you're going to look up and miraculously you're going to end over there. But that comes from time in and time out 
doing the small things over and over again, the small things that no one even knows you do, the small things that no one will ever pay attention to. No one's going to pat you on the back, but you got to do them. It's the time you wake up in the morning. It's what you do when you first wake up in the morning. It's the first thought you have when you wake up in the morning. It's how you deal with the things that no one even knows you're dealing with. Those little things that come up, those little thoughts that challenge you, those little thoughts that try to creep in and create doubt. It's all of the management of the small moments the decisions you make on a daily basis that's going to determine how well the outcome is it's going to be have you properly calibrated the direction you're traveling in that's going to have the massive impact on whether or not you're going to be successful in doing the things you desire to do in this life what is real simple a bunch of you can't possibly hit the mark because you're not even sure where the mark is you haven't sit down you haven't created a vision for your life you haven't created a destination which is the ultimate pinnacle pinnacle of your destiny where am i going to end up in this life where am i going to end up this year where am i going to end up this month where am i going to end up this week you got to have something that you're aiming for why is that important because that's how you calibrate your direction if what you want is east and you're traveling west you're never going to find it you're going to have to recalibrate your direction and that's the beautiful thing about this that's what i love about this life is that i don't expect to be everywhere i'm supposed to be i don't expect to always have it right i don't expect to make perfect decisions each and every time i don't waste my time with trying to be perfect in my decision making i use my experience i use my knowledge and I make decisions. Most of the time I do great jobs. Sometimes I, a, I hit a moment where it's just totally off, but a lot of times it could have been better and, and it, it's all okay. Why? Because my decisions determine my direction, but the beautiful thing about direction, now your direction determines your destination. What the direction you're uh, traveling in is ultimately determining your destination for the week, for the month, for the year, for the decade, for your life. So why, why, why if you're not making perfect decisions all the time and your decisions determine your direction, why is it still something to be excited about? It's because the, your direction is the one thing in this life that you can change immediately. Now, you may not receive the you may not see the results immediately, but you can literally say, you know what? I should be going that direction. Stop what you're doing. Immediately change directions. Immediately make decisions to do things differently. Immediately make decisions to, to change. I did it this morning. With everything that I'm trying to do, all the things that I have on my desk, all the things that I'm trying to do to set everybody that I love up the way I want them to. And it's this big, big undergoing endeavor that I'm at the cusp of. But I look up and say, you know what? I can't consistently be where I want to be with my physical health. That means training, working out, all the things that's really at a high priority. And so I count, I look and I say, is this going to get me where I want to be physically and mentally and emotionally? Business-wise, ultimately, I'm going to grind that out. That's something that's just in me. I'm going to grind that out. You don't get to 24 books without grinding it out. You don't get to 40 plus companies without grinding it out. That side of the thing I'm going to figure out. Am I going to be healthy? Am I going to be? Is it conducive to how I want to set things up financially? Because just because you make money don't mean you keep it. So all these things have got to be things in your mind. So what happens? I sit down there and say, nope, this is when I'm going to work out. So I move work out from midday to the first thing I do in the morning after morning meditation and prayer to the gym i changed that direction in one second sit down and say now starting tomorrow this period directions change the results will take time to see but they will produce they will produce it will will produce results because it's something that i see right now is going to produce produce the consistency i need to do what i want to do and so it's done and that is done constantly with me am i am i headed in the right direction here's the thing uh, you're constantly being knocked off track with life. You get a phone call and somebody says something. You lose your job. Uh, you lose a loved one. Somebody gets sick. Somebody has a life crisis. All of those things are going to knock you off your, 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 your path a little bit because it's a disruption. It's going to create an obstacle. Something's going to be in front of you. You got to move around it. It's about recalibrating. 
it's it's a cybernetic mentality. You know what cybernetics is? Cybernetics is the thing that works your uh, thermostat in your home. You set your thermostat in your home and there is a cybernetic mechanism that is measuring the temperature. Now, on smart thermostats, the, the newer stuff out there, it, you don't have to be there to turn it from cold to heat. You just set the temperature. Now, what happens is if you set it for 75 and say it's hot outside and you open up the windows, well, obviously the heat's going to come in and the temperature is going to go up. But guess what? The AC is going to come on once it gets past 75. It's going to get on. You say, okay, it's at 75. It goes to 76. The air AC comes on. The AC will stay on until it's able to get down. No matter what windows open, it's going to stay on and it's going to work and it's going to fight to keep that house at 75. Once it gets off, it says, same thing with autopilot on an airplane. An airplane, when, on, when it's on autopilot, it's constantly getting moved off course. What happens? Every few seconds or every, every, every minute or however they have it set, it calibrates where it's supposed to be headed versus where it's at. And it readjusts and it puts it back on path. The wind shifts, wind shifts, all those stuff is constantly moving planes off. Planes recalibrate. That 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 mechanism is called a, a cybernetic mechanism. Well, Dr. Maxwell Marx came up with this idea of psycho cybernetics. The fact that our minds will literally recalibrate and redirect us in a certain path based on what we believe, based on how we see ourselves. Our mindset and our self-concept is little, our self-image is literally a cybernetic measurement. So when we see ourselves a certain way, if we don't deal with that, guess what happens? We'll sit up and we'll start behaving a certain way because that's what we're told we'll have to do. But if our mindset and how we see ourselves and what we are, uh, are practicing in the observation of who we are is going to determine whether we're able to be consistent with it. That's why you can sit up and you can go on a crash diet. And when you look up, you've lost the weight, but then you turn around and you gain it. Why? Because you didn't change the thing inside of you that talked about how healthy you are, that talked about who you are. You are a, a person basically who are, who has an unhealthy mentality, but found a way to lose weight, but you're going to gain it back. Why? Because you didn't change the vision of who you are. You change the vision of who you are. The brain will automatically get you to the gym. The brain will automatically get you walking the block. The brain, you change your mentality about money. Your brain will automatically focus you on what you should be spending your money on and what you shouldn't. You will automatically start to feel weird when you're doing something with your money you shouldn't be doing. It will automatically change, but you've got to change the setting. You Because you will change the behavior, but you're going to keep going back to what you were until you change who you are. And then when you change who you are, you start to behave who you are. You don't get what you want in life. You get who you become. you got to get an understanding of that. But check this out. you got to wake up every day. you got to stop making excuses. I get so many excuses. I get people that contact me all the time. Doc, I want to work with you. I've, I've watched 45 of your uh, of your videos. i got three of your books. And I want to work with you. And I want to do this. And, 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 and ultimately, when we sit down, what we find out is... You want change, but you want to cheat the process. You or, or they sit down and say, "I really want it." I say, "Okay, this is what's going on." And then I'll sit up and say, "Okay, I have X, Y, Z. You know, I, I'll give them what what the price is." Ooh, man, I can't afford that. But you showed up to meet me either on Zoom or you showed up to meet me in person, and you got twelve hundred dollar shoes on. But you're talking about you need to change some things in your life. You got twelve hundred dollars shoes on. You got a fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred, three hundred. I mean, three thousand dollar bag. And all. And my thing is, do your thing. Do your thing. Ride it out. You know, you wear a, a, a Breitling watch. You're doing your thing. But don't tell me you can't afford it. Tell me it's not a priority. And I'm good with that because then we say, okay, when it? Because then my response is, when it becomes a priority. Call me and we will get it done because the until it's a priority, until you make it first, same thing with my workout. I can sit up all day and say, man, by the time I get to four o'clock, I'm exhausted. By the time I get to four o'clock, I'm exhausted, man. I, I Everything in my mind wants to go to the gym. Uh, everything in my mind. But then, you know, but I'm just tired. I'm just tired. And, 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 and what, what happens? You sit up and give yourself an excuse. But well, what I would start doing is before I made this choice is I have prioritized getting. So what I would literally do at my office is go run the stairwell. First to the 10th, 
back down, first to the tent, back down, and say, I'm doing something today to physically exert myself and get my heart rate up and work my heart because my heart health is important. Anybody who knows, knows what I've been through. So I do that. But then I said, say, that's still not what I want. Yes, that's me making a sacrifice. That's me saying I'm committed. But that's me still trying to cheat the process. Let's be honest with yourself, Rick. What do you need to do? I need to do that type of workout, but it needs to be longer. And I need to be in the gym because I still need resistance training. So then what? Are you going to prioritize it? How much? How bad do you, do you want it? How much does it mean to you? Is it really a real true priority to you? Or are you just talking? No, no, it's a priority. Then put it first. Something's going to have to give. You got 24 hours in a day. You got 86,400 seconds in a day. Something's got to give. So then you got to prioritize. What's most important to me? I'll tell you what most people do. Most people look at this big, long list because our lives are so crammed with junk right now. Everybody's busy. People ain't got jobs, busy all day. Just something go. I got to go here. I got to go there. I got to do this. I got to do that. So-and-so called me, want me to come over here. All this and then it's all this stuff. Yeah, all that stuff. Let me tell you something. There are four to five things on your to-do list that can change your life. Guess what, though? Those four to five things are the most challenging, time-encumbering uh difficult things that to tackle in a day. It's going to take up most of your day to do those four things. So guess what most people do? Most people do the other 30 things that they can just knock out like this. Why? Because at the end of the day, they got all these checks on their to-do list checked off or scratched out, and it makes them feel like they've accomplished something. But the very things that they need in order to advance their lives are still sitting on the desk. You are going to have to prioritize what's important. Knock out the things that are going to have the greatest impact first. And yes, it's probably going to take the vast majority of your morning. But guess what? What you will actually find out is that when I knock out the things that are most important, a bunch of that other stuff falls off automatically. I have to stop majoring in the minor in order to pass my test and move forward. I can do all these little checks and say, man, man, I got 30 some things done today. I, I was busy. I, I, and didn't do anything worth anything. You're going to have to make up in your mind. Another thing that I see people doing, I want the success of X, Y, Z, man, you know, I wonder what that person did to be so successful. That person, well, here are some things that I can tell you about successful people, people that I've known and studied people that I have known at a distance and studied, people who I've had deep, long, intimate conversations with. There are some consistencies with people who are successful. People who are successful tend to get up before everybody else, anywhere from four to six o'clock in the morning at the latest. They're up, they're doing something, they're committed. And it is you know, rare that you find somebody that successful, especially in business and finance uh, and in any type of social engagement that are still sleep eight, nine, 10 o'clock in the morning. Sleeping in is what people who don't have intentions of doing anything but meandering through the maze of mediocrity and being average. First thing, you got to get your butt up. You got to get out of the bed. That's the first thing. Wake up. Stop hitting the snooze button. The snooze button is lethal. And I'm going to tell you something. When I say the snooze button is lethal, I mean it in multiple ways. The snooze button is lethal to your dreams. The snooze button will literally destroy your dreams because you'll keep hitting it and you'll waste time that you never get back. Remember, there's those 86,400 seconds we talk about all the time. Look, hit that snooze button. You, 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 you're killing time that you can't get back. That's the first way. It's killing your dream. Second way, it's literally physically killing you. And people don't even realize that. You sleep in cycles. You go through probably four or five sleep cycles a night. They normally last around two to two and a half hours. So when you enter a cycle, you go from different phases of sleep until you go into REM sleep and then you start to come out of it. And then that's normally when you wake up in the, at a certain point of the night, realize, okay, I've been laying here, I'm kind of uncomfortable. You shift. 
and then you go back to sleep and then you fade off into that deep sleep again and you go and you do this four or five times a night and the thing is you're supposed to complete cycles so normally very rarely does a person complete a cycle perfectly and just wake up out of the cycle except people who are successful why most people who are successful are passionate about what they do that's another thing they're in a space that they literally enjoy doing it that even if they didn't get paid doing it they would probably do it anyway because they absolutely love what they do so they're doing that so number one is normally they will wake up somebody told me a long time ago the moment that you fall in love with what you do you won't need an alarm clock and so here it is so you wake up and there's a time that you wake up every day and it's probably at the end of a sleep cycle but let's just say that you still need that alarm clock when that alarm clock goes off nine times out of ten it's waking you out of a sleep cycle the problem is when you keep hitting that snooze button you dozing back off to sleep every time it goes off again it's waking you out of a sleep cycle that actually takes a toll on you emotionally psychologically and physically it's literally uh counterproductive physically for you counterproductive mentally for you so it's literally not doing what you think it is the moment that it goes off cut it off get out of the bed five four three two one up now with me i don't go five four three two one up i cut it off and i lay there why because i'm establishing my state before i get out of the bed why because i understand from the work that i've done that if i turn around and i put my feet on the floor i trigger my left the left side of my brain the reason the ration the executive function all the decision making all the things that's going to identify what needs to be done all that stuff so now i'm in work mode the moment my feet hit the ground now the thing is what if there are some things that's going to be triggered that i'm going to have to deal with that are not necessarily positive so what i do is my first part of my day the moment that i wake up is to lay there and to determine reasons to be grateful i want to trigger gratitude in my life before i encounter any challenge of the day i uh so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to lay there and i'm going to come up with reasons to be thankful it's real easy for me at this stage in the life because all i have to do is look over to my left and my beautiful wife is laying there so i watch her and i see her take a breath and i go man great life then i look up and i sit up and say man god has entrusted me with so much and so many people who are expecting me to perform and that's in and of itself something to be grateful for that god thought enough of me to entrust me with so much i i i i, I get off on that and then i'm sitting up and saying man it's a bunch of times in this life that life tried to take me out but i'm still standing i'm still breathing i'm still here i'm still making a difference something to be grateful about i haven't thought about one thing negative because it doesn't matter to me I'm here to show up and put in work. I'm here to make my presence felt. I'm here to do things so that people look and say something's possible. I'm not here to whine. I'm not here to complain. I'm not here to point fingers. I don't want to play the victim. Victim card for me expired decades ago. Don't play it. Don't pull it. Don't use it. It's worthless because it produces nothing. Victim card expired. Check this out. Now I roll over, put my feet on the floor. But now I've already got a mindset of that. This is my day. doesn't matter what happens in the day. It's my day. Bad things happen in the day. I got this. I'm built for this. I'm grateful for everything that came. And I can't even be standing here if I don't have a God in my life that's capable of covering anything that I come in contact with. So it may be bigger than me but it is not bigger than God. And I have God sitting right there. God is never not there. I am never alone. So what am I afraid of? What could I possibly be stressed out about? I don't have to have the answer to know that the problem will be solved because I know who has the answer. So I'm just moving. Next thing, I don't pick up that phone. That's what so many people surrender their personal sovereignty in the morning. Long clock goes off, hit the long clock, pick up the phone. When you sit up and you pick up that phone, you surrender your personal sovereignty. What are you saying, Doc? What I'm saying is this. You don't know what's on that phone. You don't know if it's going to be a great message a deal just went through or if you're going to get a message someone just passed away or you're going to get a message deal frail through. Uh, you're going to get a message IRS saying you owe blah, blah, blah. You don't know what's on there. 
And what's on there will have an impact. What you want to do is make sure by the time you find out what's on that phone, you're ready for it no matter what. So what is your responsibility? Protect your sovereignty. So for the first hour, the phone's not on. Not, 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 not surfing nothing. No, no, none of that. I'm now in my prayer meditation mode. Now I'm seeking a deeper level of gratitude, a deeper level of thankfulness, a deeper level of communication. I don't do a whole lot of talking. That's one of the things that I share with people when I'm talking and when I'm counseling people about prayer life. I'm like, y'all do way too much talking in your prayers. That's a traditional thing that you were taught at religion. You talk too much. You're talking way too much. Prayers about revelation. Most people don't get that. Prayers about prayers about hearing from God more than telling. What are you gonna let look? What are you gonna tell God that God doesn't know? From the from my theology, God is omniscient, meaning God knows everything, past, present, and future. God even knows all the what ifs. Those questions you ask. Well, what if I would have did this instead of God knows the answer? What would have happened? That's how much God knows. So. There's nothing I'm going to tell God that God doesn't know. So when I'm talking to God, it's not for the sake of making sure God is informed. It's just me venting. It's just me getting some stuff off my chest. And it's cool because you need somebody that you can counsel with. So it's good. Hey, look, I'm just having a real bad day. God knows, but it's, it's still okay. But that can't be the bulk of the conversation. And what gratitude does is gratitude puts you in the proper state and energy and frequency and vibration to communicate with God because God doesn't communicate audibly. God communicates through spirit. That's why in Romans chapter eight, it says that the spirit of God testifies to my spirit that I am a part of the royal family of God, that the spirit of God testifies to my, so it's the spirit communicating with the spirit. It's spirit on spirit. Problem is, your spirit can't be down in stress, anxiety, worry, frustration, all of those things that we tend to get caught up in in this world, anger, envy, all of that stuff is down. If you measure it on a hertz scale, it's down 200, uh, 200 hertz or less. But when you talk about raising your vibration and energy that can be measured, when you get to gratitude, you have a minimum of 500 hertz. You talk about love, 550, 60. But guess what? When you start talking about revelation, where you're learning new things, you're experiencing a new, uh, a new, uh, a, a, a new uh, surge of knowledge and inspiration, 750 hertz and higher. This is that space where God is communicating. That's where you can hear from God. That's where you can literally have your best prayer life is when you sit up and you approach God with gratitude instead of pain. Now, I'm not saying you don't talk because I talk to God all the time, especially if I get one of the moments where I'm about to get somebody to business. Like, God, you know better than I do what's about to happen here. Give me something to work with because I'm about to touch him. I'm about to let him have it. I'm about to give it to him. And then it'll say, hey, what you going to get out of that? And then, but I'm able to get my, myself back to where I need to be. So I'm not saying we're perfect, but what I'm saying is you need to be at 500 or better most of the day. And when you find yourself falling below 500, you got to get back. I have a 90 second rule. I have a 90 second rule. My 90 second rule says, Rick, you're human. Don't put anything on yourself beyond your humanity because you're setting yourself up for failure. So I say, Rick, you're human. What does that mean? Somebody's going to tick you off. Somebody's going to say something that doesn't make you feel too well. Something's going to happen in the day that's not going to go your way and you're going to get perturbed. That, that, that's going to happen. It's called life. But instead of identifying with it, instead of immersing yourself in it, instead of allowing it to conquer your day, you got 90 seconds to experience it and come out of it. And that's it. I got 90 seconds to be mad, curse, whatever I'm going to do. Those of you know me know how I'm going to respond. And then in that 90 seconds, it's over. It's gone. Because what I did in that 90 seconds had absolutely nothing to do with what I'm going to do about it and how I'm going to come out of it wasn't a solution. It was a response. More importantly, it was really a reaction. And now it's time to take action. So now after that 90 seconds, set it down. It's not about how I feel when I set it down, because if I acted on how I felt, I probably would hold on to it a lot longer because I'm not done yet. But it's not that it's a 90 seconds. 
you got to be disciplined. 90 seconds. Look, I'm looking at it. I mean, literally, I'm like, okay, man, I got a minute and a half to deal with this crap. So what am I going to do? And what I find is long before I get to the 90 seconds, I'm already ready to put it down because ain't nothing coming out of the emotion. So now I'm setting it down probably in 30 seconds, 45 seconds, 60 seconds. But I give myself 90 seconds just in case it's some real. It doesn't mean that my feelings aren't uh, impact. doesn't mean I don't have emotional moments. What it means is they can't dictate my day. You don't make your decisions out of your emotions. That's where a lot of people make mistakes. But no, see what I'm telling you is you got to come out of it. You got to take action. You got to move. You got to become what it is you want. You got to sit up and you got to make some decisions. You got to change directions. You got to look at your life and say, where I'm at right now is not where I want to be. Where I'm going is not where I want to be. Where I need to go needs to be that direction. I've got to change. I got to change the way I deal with my money. I got to change the way I talk to my wife or my husband. I got to change the way I talk and handle my kids. I got to change the way I spend my money. I got to find more ways to make money. I got to change my direction. Because if I change my direction, I simultaneously change my destination. But what you cannot have is excuses. Doc, I can't afford it. No, you don't want to make the sacrifice. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some people that literally are not in a place to afford what I offer. Uh, and I find them programs. I try to connect them to places. Uh, what I had to learn, though, is I had to learn to stop discounting myself so much because it just creates so much problem. And I also found out when you tend to give people breaks, they tend to be the most problematic people. Uh, I mean, it's it's a crazy dynamic, but it is. I mean, the pe every problematic situation with somebody I gave a discount, the people who pay full price don't give me anywhere close to the hassles of the people that's sitting up negotiating and trying to beat down. So, But the thing is, there are people out there who can't. And I try to create little ways to work with people who don't, like, you know, these little one-off programs where I get to work with you a couple of times and, and give you some insiders and really get to the core issue and give you some idea of what you need to do. And I think they have been very successful. But what I'm giving to the person that's paying me 10 5 that person is getting every bit of that and some. They're walking away with way more value than what they spent. And the idea of someone expecting to get that for $500. But then we'll go out and spend five grand on a purse speaks a lot to self-image and a bunch of other things but that's not why i'm here what i am here to say is no excuses and plus dr rick ain't for everybody so you know but you gotta find something that you're prioritize willing to prioritize above everything else you've got to find something that means enough to you to put in the work you got to find something as eric thomas will say you got to find something that you want as bad as you want to breathe if you don't want it that bad you're not going to finish it but see that ain't too much you're going to want more than you want to breathe one i mean you know when you want i mean you want if, until you've had air restricted you can't understand this until you've been underwater longer than you want to be. And you're struggling to get back to the surface and you don't and you you when you get there, you're gasping for air. You don't know what it means. Or some people who may have had COVID over the last few years or have some other respiratory illness. And you know how hard it is to breathe until you've had a situation like that. You can't understand what, what is being said here. It's a situation where you are put in a situation where you can't get air like you want it. Or if you've ever ran a track meet or played football in Denver, again, trust me, you 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 get it. What happens? Not a lot of oxygen in the air. Air is thin at high elevations, and you start exerting yourself, and your body's trying to get enough oxygen, but it's not acclimated to that altitude, and you're struggling to breathe. You know what I'm talking about. But guess what? How you feel at that moment when you're trying to get that air and you can't get it? That's how you got to feel about that thing you want that you can't have right now. You got to want it that bad. You got to want it as bad as you want to breathe. You got to want it that bad. You got to want it to where you're going to put a bunch of things aside to get it. Ain't nothing you're going to do when you can't breathe uh, that's going to trump 
you trying to get that air. So that's your number one focus. It's going to have to be the same way when you talk about changing your life, about doing something different. You're going to have to commit. You're going to have to focus. You're going to have to fight. It's that simple. Too many people giving up. Too many, too many people quitting. Too many people getting to a point where I've been trying. For Man, if you're in it, don't stop until you finish. Don't sit up and let life snatch you out of your moment. How many people quit right before the breakthrough? You guys who will follow me know me. Once I start, two options. Get it or die trying. Period. No other option. I'm not finna fold. I'm not finna give up. I'm not finna quit. Not gonna turn around. No surrender. No retreat. I am going to finish or I'm gonna die trying. Either way, they're going to have to say he came hard. There won't be any wimpy uh, narrations about the life I lived. I had to grow up quick. I had to learn. But I learned from some of the best. And what I'm trying to do is give something to you. You need to be living at the level of your design. And I'm done. You need to be living at the level of your design. What does that mean? You were designed for greatness. God didn't design not one person for mediocrity. God did not design one person to be average. God designed you to come into this world and make your presence felt, to be a representation of God, to sit up and say, man, when you're walking in your destiny, there's absolutely nothing that can stop you. That's the definition of destiny. The more you try to stop it, the more you ensure it happens. It's destined, but you've got to sit up and walk it. You've got to sit up and walk it and know no matter what, you have what it takes. And what you can't do, God will do. Every answer you need is already on the way. You got to keep walking it. Look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Like I said, if you want to work with me, you want to uh, tap into some of the resources, go to the resource box or send us an email. Uh, but whatever you do, calibrate your direction so that you're headed in the direction of the destination you desire to be at. That's how this thing works. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day and weekend in case I don't get back to you. And know, know this. I live my life on full. I mean, I do this literally daily. I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. That's, I mean, that's my legacy is to die on E. And for those people who don't get it, who don't get what dying on E is, uh, I got this from uh, a, a very powerful uh, man that I still hold in great and high regard who lost his life in a plane crash, Dr. Miles Monroe. And he he would say, and I've heard Les Brown repeat it, but Dr. Monroe would say that the cemetery is the wealthiest place on the planet. And he was saying that you will find businesses not started at the cemetery, books not written, financial deals not entered, relationships not cultivated. Uh, and, and on and on and down the line. And it's untapped potential that people took to the grave with them. It's just, and it was worth, and it's worth so much, but it was never engaged. It was never taken on. It was never completed because they took the easy route. They snuck into the corner of comfort. They did not push themselves to the point of optimizing the potential that God had planted in them by way of gifting. And that is a sad thing. So live your life on full and down E. And the world will know who you were long after you're gone. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable weekend. I'm out. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage 
uh, initiative and restoring ghetto for ghettos forgotten daughters which is a program focused on helping young girls but boys as well suffering from childhood sexual abuse uh, rape molestation domestic abuse uh, absentee fatherhood and so many other things uh, the information will be in the box thank you